All right, the first substance I'm going to test is uh, filtered water. This is filtered rainwater. So this will serve as a baseline reading uh, for the rest of the substances that I'm going to test. Um, the ORP is about 245 uh, millivolts to the positive side. I'm going to let the meter, the probe set in for about five minutes and we'll see where we're reading at that point and then we'll move on to some other substances. Okay, I've let the meter uh, sit for a few minutes and we're getting a conductivity reading in the low 260s. That's a positive 260 millivolts. This is in line with uh, what I've tested before. I've tested this uh, filtered rainwater before and it's in the 260 to 270 millivolt uh, range before. And uh, I just calibrated this meter so this seems like an accurate measurement. Okay, this is uh, the same filtered rainwater as before, except I've used it to make um, a licorice root tea, as you can see. Um, I used 10 grams of the licorice root into three cups of water and uh, decocted. I boiled it for maybe 20 minutes. Um, so we can already see that the ORP reading is lower and is continuing to go down. So. What that says is that this is a more reductive substance than just the filtered uh, rainwater by itself. That is, it more readily donates um, electrons um, to any other chemical constituents it might come into contact with. So this has more, um, more than likely more free radical quenching capacity than just the pure rainwater. Um, one thing I want to mention is that the ORP reading is uh, a relative measurement. That is, uh, the uh, 125 millivolts we're seeing right now is relative to the platinum electrode um, in that probe. So it's not to say that if you have a positive reading, it's an oxidative substance, and if you have a negative reading, it's a reductive substance. The important thing um, more so is how the substance tests relative to the water. So what we'll do is we'll let this sit again like uh, the filtered rainwater. We'll let this sit for a few minutes. All right, a few minutes have elapsed and we have a positive 115 millivolts on the licorice root. So that's quite a bit better than the water. Let's see how our other substances test. Okay, the next substance I'm testing um, is a reishi mushroom tea, again made with the same water as in the first clip. Um, this is uh, the mushroom of immortality. Uh, it's most famous for the beta-1,3 glucans. These are the long polysaccharides that give uh, medicinal mushrooms their immune modulating capability. So we're going to let this sit a few minutes. Uh, and see where the ORP reading goes. It's definitely lower than the filtered water at this point, but actually not quite as low as the licorice root tea. Um, this may not be the highest quality reishi. I believe this reishi um, was grown on sawdust blocks, um, but we'll see what it tests at. All right, I've waited a few minutes and uh, the Rishi T is testing in the low um, 190 millivolt range. Um, again, this is not not quite as low of a redox potential as the licorice root T, but uh, decidedly lower than the filtered water. Okay, the next substance I'm testing the redox potential of is uh, this shiitake mushroom tea. Again, same water as in the first clip. Uh, these dried mushrooms were uh, decocted for about 30 minutes, um, 10 grams to 3 cups of water. Uh, shiitake, like reishi, is uh, quite famous for the beta-1,3 glucans. These are Again, the immune modulating polysaccharides, if you have an overactive immune system and you have some kind of an autoimmune condition, 
this can really help bring your immune system back into balance. Uh, but if on the other hand you are fighting infection, um, this helps with that too. It helps to modulate your immune system um, to meet the demands of um, what you are presented with. Um, if you're fighting something off, it can raise um, your immune activity. Um, shiitake is uh, also known for its cholesterol uh, lowering ability um, and it's also high in vitamin D. When these mushrooms are dried with their gills up in uh, natural sunlight, they produce copious quantities of vitamin D. So this is a great way to get your vitamin D um, in the winter time, either by drinking the tea or eating the mushrooms cooked in uh, various different ways. These are um, already testing significantly lower than um, the reishi uh, mushroom tea. I suspect that these, that is because these are log grown. These are grown naturally um, outdoors on logs. Um, so what we'll do is we'll give this a few minutes. It's it's still dropping pretty fast, so we'll uh, let the uh, um, redox reading uh, go for a little bit longer and see how low we go after a few minutes. Okay, uh, several minutes have passed, and uh, the shiitake tea is reading around uh, positive 114 millivolts. So that's I think lower than either the licorice tea or the um, reishi tea. Okay, the next substance uh, I'm going to test here is uh, this drink I made. It looks kind of pinkish. It's made with uh, Food Science of Vermont Superior Purples Powder. Maybe about a tablespoon to that much water. Uh, this is a pretty cool stuff. We got um, lots of different fruits in here. Blueberries, blackberries, black cherries, black raspberries, black currants, plums, elderberries, bilberries, figs, and raisins. Vegetables, um, eggplants, purple carrots, purple cabbage and beets, acai powder, camu camu powder, mangosteen fruit powder, goji berry powder, pomegranate extract, and stevia. Uh, so this is a pretty cool product. Um, and as we can see, the orp, it is lower than that of filtered water. It's going down. It's at about uh, 209. Again, this was made with the filtered rainwater. Um, but it's not as low as uh, either the reishi or the shiitake tea. So we'll give it five minutes, see if it goes lower. All right, it's been five minutes and we have about 175, 76 millivolts to the positive side. All right, now it's time for the moment of truth. Um, Again, we have the filtered rainwater. The orp is measuring about 253 millivolts. It's a little bit lower than before. It's had a little bit more time to settle in. Um, so that's our starting point. And we have the mega hydrate. This is the silica hydride uh, microclusters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, two of these tiny little capsules. Um, I've opened them up into the bowl, so we have a white powder in the bowl. And I'm going to add that to the water and stir, and we'll see what happens to the uh, orp. We'll see what happens to the redox potential. Alright, now I'm going to stir. Look at it, it plummets. We just went from about 250 millivolts on the positive side, and in a matter of seconds, we're down to negative 560 some millivolts, and we're still dropping. Um, that's amazing. None of the other substances we tested so far uh, yielded uh, even a negative orp. Um, so as you can see, this has incredible reductive potential. The reason it drops so fast, that's the negative hydrogen being released. That's the hydride anion. It's the smallest antioxidant. 
it penetrates all the tissues of the body because it's so small, which is the, one of the most important things about it, its size, it passes all membranes. Um, so it's going deep within your tissues to uh, neutralize free radicals. Uh, this water is transformed. Incredible free radical neutralization capability. And remember, it also lowers the surface tension of the water. So it's going to better hydrate all your tissues. So not only is it full of um, antioxidants, the negative hydrogen, but that negative hydrogen is going to penetrate your body better, not only because it's small, but because the water in your body is going to have a better structure. It's going to be wetter. It's going to be a better solvent. So even the water is going to get in further. Um, so this property is what makes it so that toxins in the body are eliminated better. The water is wetter. Your body can bring toxins into solution and eliminate them through the kidneys, through the skin, um, better than it would if you were drinking tap water, obviously. This is also why nutrients get into your cells better. The water's wetter. Okay, it's a better solvent. The water's going to get into your cells and it's going to bring the nutrients in the food that you're eating or the other supplements that you're taking into your cells better than if you weren't taking mega hydrate. Um, that is why this is, is such a great potentiator of what you're already doing. If you're spending hundreds of dollars on uh, supplements or healthy food, Take this with it. It's going to make it work so much better. Um, it's going to save you money. Um, another thing, this substance increases the zeta potential of the red blood cells. That is the electrical uh, potential on the surface of the red blood cell. You've probably seen live blood cell analyses where uh, the blood cells are clumped. They're like these little chains of uh, red blood cells just stuck together. Well, they've done tests with uh, this mega hydrate, and within 20 or 30 minutes after taking it, the red blood cells once again have the proper zeta potential. They're they're separate. They're like little spheres, little stars in your in your blood, rather than these clumps. So that's kind of an amazing uh, amazing thing. So it's kind of hard to imagine what uh, condition or what aspect of your health might not benefit from this substance. Hydration is everything. Again, it's your ability to um, absorb nutrients. It's your ability to detoxify. All the chemistry of the body takes place within water. So this is, this is pretty incredible, and I think everybody should be taking this. It, it's not that expensive. 60 capsules, you know, it's really not that much to be taking one of these every day, and look what you're getting. So... Again, awesome, and we're still dropping. We're at about negative 620 millivolts just from two of those tiny capsules.